Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Wyatt and today I'll be teaching you how to script an AFK command on Roblox. Okay, so before I show you how to make this script, I just want to show you how it works. So all we have to do is go into the game, and as you'll see, we can run the AFK command, and what it'll do is give us a force field and change our name, and when we run it again, it'll remove it. Okay, so now that you know what this script does, I actually want to show you how to make it. So the first thing that we're going to do, we're going to create a new script under server script service, and I'm just going to name this script AFK command, but you can name it whatever you'd like. Now in this script, the first thing we want to do, we want to get whenever a player joins the game. Um, the reason we're doing this is because the only way to get when the player chats to run that command is to get first when they join the game. Now the way we're going to do this is by hooking into the player added event of game.players. So I'm just going to say added, and then we're going to connect this event up to a function, and then inside of this function I have one parameter I'd like to get, I want to get the player parameter. So whenever a player joins the game we're getting exactly who that player was so that we can do some other code to that player later on. So after this what we want to do, I want to set up a new variable. And you just want to do this inside of this game that players that player added because we want to do this for every player that joins the game. And I'm just going to name this variable player AFK. Now all this variable is going to do, all it means is if the player is AFK or not. So if player AFK is set to false, that means the player isn't AFK. But if it's set to true, it means the player is AFK. After this, what I want to do is I want to get whenever the player chats, whenever they send a message in the chat, because that's exactly how we're going to get when they run the AFK command. So I'm going to hook into the player chatted event by saying player dot chatted, and then we'll connect it up to a function. And then inside of this function, we want to get the message. So whenever they chat, we're going to get the message that they sent. And then after this, we want to check to see if that message is equal to our command name. So you do this for any command. Maybe if you had a kick command or you had maybe a ban command, any type of command, you want to get when the player chats. And then you want to check to see what the message is equal to just so that we're able to make sure that's actually what they wanted to do. So we'll say if message is equal to and then my command name in this case is explanation point AFK, but maybe yours could be colon AFK or it could be any command you'd like, but I'm just gonna have mine as that. Then, so if they run the AFK command, then what we wanna do is we wanna toggle their force field and then we wanna set their name to either AFK player name or non-AFK, non you just wanna set it back to the regular player name. So the way we're gonna do that is we're gonna use that player AFK variable we created up top. We're gonna see if player AFK is equal to false. So if they're not AFK, if they're currently at their keyboard and they're just getting ready to go off for a sec, then what we're gonna do in here is we're gonna set that variable to true because they're getting ready to go away. They ran the command, so that means they wanna be AFK. We'll set their AFK value to true. And what we wanna do is we wanna create a new force field underneath the player, and then we wanna set their name to AFK dash their player name. And I know that sounds confusing, so I just want to show you what that looks like on a rig. You don't have to follow along here, I just want to show you. All that looks like is they have a force field on them, like this, this ring around them. And then their player name gets set to AFK-player name. So in this case, the player's name is Dummy, right? So we'd name it Dummy. But if it was me in game, it would be Orange Dude 4221 And when you're testing this out in studio, it's not going to look like this. But for other players in your game, it looks like this. So that the players know, OK, he's AFK because his name says that he's AFK. So after we have this, what we want to do is we want to do exactly what I just said, but we want to do it through code. So I'm going to create a new force field. So I'll say local force field equals, and we're going to use the instance.new function to create a force field underneath the player's character. So I'm going to say instance.new, and this just creates an object. And then we want to create what type of object we want to create. That's our first parameter. So I want to create a force field object. So I'll type in force field, and we'll have that in quotes. And then the second parameter in the instance.new function is the parent, the instance parent. What do we want to set the parent of our force field object to? Well, we want to set it equal to the player's character so that it shows up around them. So I'll say player.character because we want to create the force field underneath of the character. After this, we have one more line, and then it's just breeze from here. All we want to do is we want to set the humanoid's display name of the player. So again, if my name is orangedude4221, I'd want to set it to afk-orangedude4221. And to simulate this, the way we're going to do it through our code is we're going to say player.character.humanoid.displayName. So the display name of the humanoid, this display name property, equals, and then we want to set this to afk 
dash, which is a string, and then we want to concatenate this string. We want to add some text onto the string. We want to add on the player name, so player.name. So afk-player.name, afk-orange dude 4221, afk-bob, whatever the player's name, it'll say afk-that player's name. And this is the hard part out of the way. Now we can get to the easy part. All we're going to do, so now we have if it's equal to false, so if the player is not AFK, then we make them AFK. Now we just do the opposite. We want to say otherwise, else, if they are AFK, then we want to make them un-AFK. We want to un-AFK the player. And the way we do that is we set the player AFK variable to false because they're no longer AFK. And we also destroy the force field underneath the player.character. So right up here with the instance.new, we created the force field. Now we want to get rid of it so it gets rid of that blue outline around them. So we'll say player.character.forcefield colon destroy. And then after this, we have one more line to the script. All I want to do is set their display name back so it doesn't say AFK because they're not AFK. We want to set it back to their normal name. So all I'm going to do, I'm going to copy line 9. And we're going to paste it right down here. And rather than saying AFK dash and then adding that to this string, we're just going to delete this. We're going to set their display name, the display name property, back to the player's name. And that's actually all we have to do for the script. We can go in and test it out. And as you'll see, it's going to hook into the player chatted event. So whenever we run that AFK command, so explanation point AFK. And as you'll see right here, it creates the force field. And I know you can't see that it changed our player name, but it will for other players when they see our name. And then we can run the command one more time, and it'll toggle it back, and it'll get rid of it. Thank you so much for watching, guys. I hope you learned something new today about scripting on Roblox. As always, I'll have the pasteman link with the code and the Roblox model link with all the assets shown in this video in the description. And I'll see you guys later.